All right, how's it going everybody? So I wanted to go over my Pelican 1535 Air, mainly because I added just a few more things into the case that I wanted to show you guys. I know I went over this case a while back when I uh, did the Trek Pack 1535 insert inside and I went over a little bit of the gear that I have inside, but I added a bunch of other stuff. And um, to be honest, a lot of the stuff that I added, like about 30% of it isn't really used by me at all times but I like to have it in here in case someone else that I'm with wants to use an extra microphone or needs to get a better shot or needs a lens that I'm carrying that he probably doesn't have, he or she probably doesn't have. So I like to carry everything in this case. This is pretty much my whole little arsenal uh, with my drone, extra camera lenses, mics, a few battery chargers and stuff like that. So every time I go out, this is the case that I'm gonna be taking. All right, so one of the things that I carry outside of the box, uh, I don't really carry this at all times. I could do the case um, or everything in the case, but this is a tripod that I have. This is the only tripod I have. Um, I had a different video tripod, but I rarely used it because this one was just lighter and easier to move around. Um, and it's been working out just fine. So I haven't really felt the need to purchase another tripod. I believe this one's 109, which is still kind of pricey because there is like a bunch of Amazon specials that you can buy that's similar to this for a lot cheaper, sometimes half. But this is the one I have. I think I got it at Best Buy a long time ago. Um, doesn't have the little hook like some of the tripods do to uh, weigh it down. But the way I do it is I just hang one of my little GoPro bags and fill it up with rocks. And I hang it off of this and it's been working out just fine. So yeah, this is the tripod that I carry when I do carry a tripod. So this is it right here. It's pretty sturdy, like I said. Um, it's a pretty cheap, basic tripod you can get. All right, so this is gonna be the inside of the 1535 case. Um, I'm gonna be going over everything from left to right, that way you get an idea of what's inside. Um, this, again, this case holds about 90% of my camera equipment. Uh, the only thing that's not in here that I do have is gonna be my Sony a6600, which I'm using to record right now, and it has the 16 to 55 2.8 G lens. Uh, so this is my camera setup that I carry outside of the case when I want to record video Like when I'm driving out with my truck uh, up in the mountains or anything like that I like to keep this one outside so I don't have to be digging around in the case to get any of my gear out uh, So this one stays outside of the case at all times um, Now again, I'm going to go over everything from left to right um, And the first thing that I have here is going to be the DJI Mavic 2 Pro This is the one with the one inch sensor uh, this one does really well in like evening time when it's getting closer to like a little bit of a low light setting um, because of that one inch sensor. Um, I do have a Polar Pro uh, ND filter on it because I was shooting with this in like the midday so I went ahead and threw one on. Uh, the last time I used that I just forgot to take it off. But yeah, this is the drone I use um, and it packs up really small like you see here. This is like uh, one of the main things I picked up the DJI Mavic Pro for. Then when this model came out and I saw a bunch of the footage, I decided to pick this one up and sell my old Mavic Pro. And right underneath there, I have all the chargers, extra cables, extra propellers and things like that. Just in case I break a propeller when I'm landing it or anything, or I hit a tree branch. Um, I also have the charger in here that I use to charge the batteries and controller if I need to using my uh, Gold Zero Sherpa over here that I'll go over in a little bit. But yeah, uh, the case is pretty deep enough where I can just throw this in the, in the bottom here and then throw the drone on top, which works out perfectly fine. All right, so right above that, we have the DJI Mavic controller. Uh, this one's nice because you're able to remove the, the little knobs here so that it doesn't take up much space. And it packs up pretty small and I made a little uh, section for it right here. In this next section, I have a sling here, a camera strap from Polar Pro, or I'm sorry, uh, Peak Designs. I always get those two uh, confused. But yeah, a Peak Designs uh, strap here and my 70 to 200 for my Sony a7R IV. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite lenses here. I'm really glad I got it. It was really expensive, it took me a while to pay it off, but. Um, it's paid off now and I really like it and it's probably always going to be go going with me when I go out to take some photos. Alright, so in this section here I have all my other lenses. This is going to be my 55 Zeiss lens uh, 1.8. 
Uh, I really like this lens. I haven't used it in a while. I have been debating on whether or not I should sell it, mainly because I don't use it as much as I would like in order for me to justify it being in here in the first place. So I don't know. I really like this lens. It's really sharp. Um, it is banged up too because I have been using it for a while, but I just haven't touched it yet ever since I picked up the 70 to 200. So I don't know, we'll see, but so far it's gonna stay in here. And then this is my um, 16 to 35 2.8 G lens that I use with my Sony A7R 4 uh, I was using this before I picked up the A6600 for video, so this was like my video lens. Um, I don't shoot photos with this very much. Uh, unless I'm shooting like landscape, but I'm rarely doing that now because I'm usually shooting stuff that's like really close or I need to get a closer shot of it, like product stuff. Um, but for the most part, yeah, this is a lens that I'm probably gonna keep. I have debated on whether or not I was gonna sell this one as well, but it's just something that I rather have um, and not need later. So, plus it was expensive and I just would rather keep it. I did lose the lens cap for this when I was out one day, um, so I probably have to get another one just so I can keep it protected. All my uh, ND filters and CPL um, lenses and everything, I lost like a few of them, so I've been trying to get some new ones, so that will probably come later later down the road, and these will all be protected with some good Hoya golds or something like that. And then the last lens here is gonna be an APS-C lens. Uh, this is my 16 millimeter 1.4. I really love this lens. This is another lens that I'm probably never gonna get rid of. Uh, because it just takes really good sharp photos um, and it's a 1.4 so I really like it this one I was using it with my uh, full frame my Sony a7R4 um, to shoot photos and man it was really nice and then now that I got the a6600 I'll probably keep it even more because of that so yeah this is a really nice little lens I think it's like 450 bucks um, and yeah this is a nice little cool quick smaller lens now moving on to this section right here, this is where I keep my Sony a7R4. Um, I keep it in here because I'm no longer shooting photos with this one, I mean, sorry, I'm not shooting video with this one anymore because of the 86600. I'm now just shooting photos specifically just with this one. Um, but again, like I said, I like to keep this lens around in case I do need to use this as like a B camera or A camera, whatever you want to call it, um, depending on which one I'm using. But and yeah, I like to keep this lens to throw it on here in case I need to shoot more video and I need a wide, wider angle. So yeah, that's there. Um, this is a really nice camera, super expensive. Um, you probably you don't need to if you're getting started, but I was able to get a deal on it and then the shop I was working with, I was able to just pay it off in like three months. So yeah, I went ahead and did it. Um, if I would have done it over, I probably just would have kept the A6600 and just struggled with just having one camera. But I've been lucky enough to have two and this is one of them and it's super nice. <laughs> right next to that, I have the Rode Micro, I think it's called. So this is a microphone. This is the one I mainly use now with the 6600. Um, I don't have it on there now um, because I kind of just wanted to show you exactly how everything is. So that's probably why the audio sucks and it's just going all crazy all over the place. But yeah, this is a little mic too that I like to use. Obviously, to clean your lenses. I have that. And then my little brush here to just kind of clean some of the dirt sand off before I put my stuff away. Shouldn't have done that. But yeah, that's what's in this little section. Now moving on to this one here, this is where I like to keep all my ND filters and camera uh, memory cards, my SD cards. So this is gonna be my Polar Pro ND filters for the DJI Osmo Action. Um, I don't really use the stock or the, the clear lens that it came with. Um, I mainly just use like a ND4 on it at all times. So yeah, this is gonna be one of the ND filters. This is gonna be the ND filters for the Mavic right there. These are also Polar Pro. Um, again, that's four, eight, and 16. I normally leave the four on there at all times. So you see there, I marked it as four. Then I have some more ND filters from Polar Pro. These are gonna be the ones for the GoPro Hero 8. The GoPro Hero 8 is kind of different. Um, it uses a different, um, lens so you need to buy a little attachment or actually it comes with the attachment when you buy these uh, nd filters here but i went ahead and jerry rigged this little um pelican case to fit all these um all these nd filters in there so it's been working out pretty good and then this is my nd filters i mean sorry my, this, these are my uh extra sd cards 
A lot of them are missing mainly because I gave some away or I let other people borrow them. So these are like my extras. This is like my extra for my Sony A7R4. Um, I had a, a few other fast uh, SD cards that I don't have anymore. Um, I, I honestly don't know what happened to them. But yeah, these are all my little extra SD cards. All right, so next I have the Rode Lav Mic. Uh, this is the one that you can use with your uh, iPhone or phone. Um, but I have the attachment here so that I, I can use it with the wireless go from Rode uh, in case I want to just use a little um, receiver with the lav mic instead of having the uh, wireless go directly on the shirt which is pretty bulky and you can see it that way I can use this this lav mic and it could be a little bit more hidden next we have the wireless go here this is the one I was talking about so what I do is I go ahead and um, well, actually this is a receiver a transmitter or whatever so I go ahead and connect it to here. That way this can be hidden in a pocket or something and you can use the lav mic to go under your shirt and it'll be less visible than this box connected directly to your shirt like that. So that's why I like using both of these mics um, mainly because it's a little bit more easy to hide. All right, and lastly we have this area here. This is where I pretty much throw whatever I need or sometimes I take things out or add things to it. So yeah, the first thing is gonna be this uh, Rode mic, which is on, uh, but yeah, this Rode mic here. Uh, this is the one I use for at-home stuff um, to record my voice when I'm doing like voiceovers. Sometimes I use it to record voiceovers or if I'm in front of the camera like I am right now, kind of on the side. So I would, I would normally have this mic connected, but because I wanted to show you what's inside the box, um, I don't have it connected. But yeah, this one will, will probably live on my camera majority of the time. Um, this one gives you pretty good audio. This is a Video Mic Pro. This is a newer version. They have an older version that I recently had, but I sold in order to get this one. So yeah, this is a rechargeable one. You don't need batteries for it, although you could add your own batteries to it. Um, this one comes with a rechargeable battery, so you're not there fumbling around with those, uh, what are they called? Those squared batteries. I don't know what they're called. But yeah, this is a really nice mic. Next, just this um, Think Tank uh, battery holder. I keep all my batteries in here. The batteries for the A6600 uses the same ones as the uh, Sony A7R, uh, A7 III, all those. Uh, these last you a really long time, so I really just need two per camera. I'll probably end up getting a few more. I'm not sure though, because they are kind of pricey, at least for the Sony ones. The aftermarket one, like I have here, I'll go ahead and link these aftermarket ones, but I've been having really good luck with them. Um, I've had a few of them, but I gave some away too to a buddy of mine. Uh, but they've been working just fine. They don't really give me issues. They do set the warning off. If you have a Sony camera and you use aftermarket cam uh, batteries, you know what I'm talking about. That warning that tells you your battery is like not compatible or something like that. You could just click OK and you'll be able to use it just fine. But yeah, these, these still give you that warning, but they last just as long as the Sony ones. So, I mean, if you want to save money, you can go that route. Next, I have this little light here um, in case I'm working in the dark. I could just pull this up and just light up my little area here. Um, this is a Surefire Sidekick attached with a Geisley uh, little lanyard here so I can find it a little bit easier. Next, uh, it's gonna be this GoPro suction mount. This is my favorite mount that GoPro makes. I mean, other people make them obviously, but this is my favorite GoPro mount. So if I have my DJI Osmo Action, which uses the same uh, adapters and stuff. I can put put it on, throw it on here, or I can throw my GoPros as well. Um, yeah, this is the one I like to use the most. Next is going to be this Aperture T9 M9. Yeah, M9. This will kind of give you some light, and it's also dimmable, so you can dim it real low or throw it up there. Comes with this attachment, you can throw it on your camera. Kind of get some uh, some lighting on there, and then you. Let me actually let me turn this off. You can actually remove this and throw on different gels, so you can get a different color, get a little bit warmer gels. So it's pretty versatile. I, I think uh, they have a newer one that's actually a lot nicer. I've been trying to get it. It's slightly bigger than this, but um, I don't know. I'll go ahead and link that one too, so you can check it out. Uh, you can check this one out as well as a newer one. This is still my favorite one, even though it has less features than the newer one because it's just so slim and small. You could throw this in your pocket and um, you could be good to go. All right, so next I have the extra 
DJI Mavic 2 Pro uh, battery here. This is pretty much where I keep most of my batteries and chargers and things like that. So that's what you'll be seeing a lot of. Uh, next is gonna be this really nice camera right here. This is like, I think this is called the, oh, the Insta360 Go. Uh, you can record things normally that you wouldn't be able to with your big camera because it's just too big. Um, you can get this, you can use this magnet, throw it onto your shirt and record shots like POV stuff as you're moving around and things like that. Uh, so it's perfect for that. Next is gonna be both of the action cameras I use and this is gonna be the GoPro Hero 8. Remember I was telling you about that uh, attachment that you need to throw on here if you're gonna be using any of the ND filters. Uh, how do you take this off? Okay, yeah. So it's like a little plate. And then the next camera is gonna be the DJI Osmo Action. This one was a camera that I purchased a while back, obviously when it first came out. And I honestly thought it was gonna be like a GoPro killer, it was gonna kill the GoPro. But I can tell you right now that the Hero 8 has a lot better stable, uh, that stable footage or whatever they call it. A lot of them call it different things. Uh, but it's a lot more stable. It honestly looks like a gimbal. This one is pretty good too, but it's not as good as the GoPro Hero 8. Um, this one has like a front facing camera. So if you're recording yourself or vlogging or things like that, you can see yourself and kind of frame your shot a little better. Even though you really don't need to with a camera like this because it has a really big uh, field of view. Uh, but yeah, this is the DJI Osmo Action. I like to carry this one too. This is the one I use to record inside of the vehicle stuff. This is the one I trust more being outside because it's sealed. And this one, as you can see, once that's off, it's kind of exposed and yeah. So that's my two action cameras that I take with me. All right, next is gonna be the Loom Cube here. I, this is another one of those similar to the M9 uh, Lite. I like to carry this thing around because it's magnetic and you can just kind of throw this anywhere. It's pretty bright too. I believe they have a newer version of this. Uh, you might want to check it out. I'll go ahead and link it down below. I always like to link the older and newer versions so you can check both of them out. But yeah, this is a pretty cool little light. And then these are the batteries for the DJI Osmo Action. And then lastly is gonna be the Sherpa 100. This is like my favorite thing to have in here because it charges everything, everything I have, including using, uh, if I'm using the DJI Mavic 2 Pro charger that needs an AC, I have an AC here, I have two USBs, two uh, type C's, so this is perfect to charge all my stuff. Um, it also has a wireless charger up here, so if you need to charge your phone, you just throw your phone up there and it'll start charging it, obviously you have to turn it on. There you go. So once you throw your phone up there, it'll start charging. So this is pretty cool to have, um, especially when you're out and you're like reviewing your footage and you wanna just hang out and keep your stuff charged while you're going over all your memory card and stuff like that. You can use this to charge all your stuff. So this is pretty nice. This is about 230 bucks. But again, it, it it's pretty nice to have if you're gonna be using a lot of electronics and cameras and drones and stuff like that, laptops, you can charge everything. Also comes with a few extra wires that you can use. Type C to Type C is the one I keep in here for all my GoPro stuff. And then obviously you still need the micro USB because there's still some companies that haven't caught up and are still using a micro USB. So it's good to have a micro USB charger there. And yeah, that's gonna be it pretty much for this uh, 1535 setup. Um, again, it's a lot of gear. It's about 90% of my stuff. Uh, I don't feel comfortable taking this and leaving it in the car, so I do have methods of locking this up to my seat using these posts here. So I'll use a lock and then I'll lock this one to the seat and I'll try to make it as hard as I can to make some uh, for someone to take this out of my vehicle. So yeah, I'm not recommending you do this. Uh, this is just what I use when I'm out there recording and I know I'm not gonna be leaving my vehicle somewhere for a long period of time. And this is one of my favorite cases that Pelican makes. Um, I do have their 1535 uh, protective case. Uh, it's not the air, it's not light, it's a little bit heavier, but that's the one I use for all my firearm stuff to keep them safe and locked up and secured. Uh, this is the one I use for all my camera equipment because it's the air, it's a little bit lighter since I am throwing a lot of stuff in here. I am gonna be getting the travel version of it where it has a TSA locks on it. Um, and it's the same air case, it just has a TSA lock and a little bit easier latches. Uh, so they're a little bit easier to open. 
Um, and then, yeah, I really recommend this case if you do get it and you are planning to uh, putting some uh, throwing some camera gear in there. I recommend getting this track pack system only because it's very modular. You can move things around when you get tired of them, like I have plenty of times. Uh, if you're using the foam insert, it'll work, but it, you know once you cut once, you can't re organize it or move things around because you know it's foam and you already cut it out um, they also have their own i believe it's like a yellow insert that you can use from pelican and that one works well but again you're very limited to it because whatever sections it's cut off in that's the, that's the only thing you can use uh, but yeah this is my favorite little system here this trek pad you can move things around take these off reconnect them and um, configure this however you want you can make this thing bigger or not so yeah this is again, one of my favorite cases to use for all my camera equipment. All right, and that's gonna be it. Um, I'll go ahead and link everything down below, the case, the track pack system, the mics, everything I can. I'll also link the newer and older versions of things. That way you can decide whether or not uh, it's worth the upgrade if you are interested in purchasing any of, any of this stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be it. I'll see you guys later.